In the actions of volleyball, the term spike is the most significant technical means to win scores. It not only enables scoring, but also attracts the audience's attention and builds anticipation. The player who initiates the move starts at around 4 to 5 metres behind the line on their side of the court. By having a fast and explosive run-up, they can jump higher into the air and perform the spike action with greater strength. Therefore, the outcome of the ball flying towards the other side of the court will have a greater velocity. The spike jump is like a normal serve, however, it includes four main aspects. The run-up, counter-movement jump, a set of explosive overhead movements while in the air, and the landing phase. These movements are the key to a successful serve. It is important to understand the bio biomechanical principles that relate to the volleyball spike movement. During each phase, the biomechanical principles work differently to achieve the desired outcomes of that move. The main outcome of the run-up is to gain maximum momentum to ensure their jump is of great height. To help achieve this, a particular amount of force needs to be applied to decrease inertia and therefore change their overall velocity. To help overcome inertia, the ground must ex exert an equal and opposite reaction force, which would help the player gain momentum if the force applied is high enough. In volleyball, jumping is one of the most important skills to learn. During the jump phase, inertia needs to be decreased. Although inertia uses no units of measures, measurements, the overall amount of inertia the body has is directly related to its mass. Therefore, the more mass the players have, the harder it will be to overcome their state of motion and jump higher. Shoulder hyperextension, accompanied by the arm swing and trunk flexion, work together to promote the shoulder's degrees of freedom. Ensuring that the elbow remains abducted lowers the moment of inertia to promote accuracy in the ball toss. The next phase is the arm swing. It is considered a multifaceted movement, which includes forward swing, back swing and turn swing. The kinetic, the kinetic chain is a link between all body segments that work together to create force summation. These are divided into two movement patterns and the throw-like movement pattern relates to the volleyball spike. The critical features are variables that contribute to the successful completion of the volleyball spike. Critical features have been identified in each goal with three of them being of great importance to this analysis. The ones being analysed have been circled. The player's base of support, which is considered a qualitative variable, is the area between their feet when they stand with their legs apart. The greater this area is, the better stability they have. The second critical qualitative feature is shoulder hyperextension, and the quantitative feature critical to the movement is ball velocity. To help analyse the movement of the volleyball spike, there are several considerations for filming that need to be implemented. Using brightly coloured joint markers and instructing the player to wear black clothing will help determine the movement more clearly. The coloured markers were placed on the shoulder, elbow, wrist, hip, knee and ankle. The movement was conducted outside where the player can perform the movement without, with decent space. A camera with the capacity to shoot at 120 frames per second or higher will allow for clear and precise imaging during the fast-paced movement. The camera will need to be placed so that the dominant side of the player can be seen with floodlights floating towards them. All measurements and calculations were conducted on Kenobia. The movement of the jump phase relies heavily on the player's base of support. It is integral in the takeoff phase that occurs simultaneously with arm acceleration and works collaboratively to improve jump height. Having an insufficient width in the base of support is linked to having poor joint velocities at the ankles and knees, which can negative, negatively affect the way ground reaction forces produce takeoff velocity. Alexander and Harnish, 2017, found that there was a positive relationship between the base of support and the jump height. By implementing a run-up, um, it includes and promotes braking mechanisms that will widen base of support through deep flexion of the supporting leg. It will help produce a high takeoff velocities and jump height, and the subject, the subject is lacking in these areas as they did not have a run-up. The positioning of the shoulder at the approach phase is important when allowing a greater arm swing. It is a key mechanism that increases jump height in conjunction with lateral flexion of the trunk. However, poor trunk flexion results in less extension of the shoulders and can limit the arm swing. The phases of this movement can be seen on the skeletons, 1 through 6. The serve performed the participant only displays phases 5 and 6. This limits the ability to produce a successful hit.
As seen in image 2, the shoulder begins to flex and flows through the anterior-posterior chain during phases 3 and 4. By using this manner of serve, the participant is utilising trunk flexion laterally as a rotational lever in preparation for ball contact. The participant then hyperflexes the shoulder in phase 5 and extends to a flex position in phase 6. The shoulder should maintain extension for as long as possible to generate a smaller force per unit. By implementing more shoulder hyperextension for longer, by increasing the arm swing capacity, a greater ground reaction force, takeoff velocity and jump height will help with these movements. The ball velocity is an indicator of the force produced by the upper limbs and was calculated by measuring the distance and time taken from when the ball is first contacted to several frames afterwards to find initial velocity and then two more frames to find peak velocity. According to Patel 2012, elite volleyball players can produce spike speeds of over 60 km per hour. In this case, the subject had a peak velocity of 13.032 km per hour, which is significantly less than that of the elite players. With every additional newton kilowatt force, all velocity increases by 2 km an hour. The force output generated from the hit was 39 newtons. This means the poor velocity can be attributed to the poor force output. Without enough force, the ball cannot be spiked due to the lack of momentum. The momentum produced by the subject was 238.92 kg per meter second. Patel 2012 found that elite players produced around 833.35 kg per meter second. This is a significant difference and can be seen in the movement. The subject needs to make improvements in her ball velocity and momentum to improve and in turn will help allow for a successful ace. Having a run-up will help produce a faster movement, therefore the transition between arm acceleration and the contact made with the ball will create a greater force output and momentum, therefore having a smoother kinetic chain. In summary, for the participant to continue to improve her, improve her performance, they need to implement shoulder hyperextension and widen the base of support to help increase the jump height. Including a run-up can generate more force and acceleration for ball velocity, and all of these will contribute to the success of scoring an ace.